Hi, Chem 30 people. Uh, this vodcast deals with a model of reaction rates, model for reaction rates, part one. A second part will follow after this. Um, so, looking at reaction rates, we have to look at what do I mean by rate? And in general, a rate can be defined as some change in quantity over change in time. Now, in everyday life situations, for example, speed is considered a rate. It's a change in distance over change in time. In chemistry, though, we look at chemistry things. For example, formation of a product could be the change in quantity. For example, the production of a gas, we could measure that and see how that changes with respect to time. Or the disappearance of a reactant throwing a piece of magnesium ribbon in hydrochloric acid, it would be used up. We could measure that in terms of change in time, etc. So there's only a few ways in which we can measure a reaction rate. If I take a look at the hypothetical reaction, uh, reactant A producing product B, I could look at a couple of different ways of measuring the rate with, those, uh, with that particular reaction. One thing I have to be uh, aware of is that rate needs to be expressed as a positive amount. It doesn't make sense to say that something has a negative rate. Those of you who are non-physics people, if you heard the car was traveling negative 110 kilometers per hour, it likely wouldn't make much sense. To the physics people, it wouldn't, though, because that's a negative velocity. So to avoid that issue, express the rate as a positive amount. So the two ways I could express it, I could express it in terms of a reactant. So I could have it in terms of the change in concentration of A over the change in T. Bear in mind that the Greek symbol delta means change in, uh, the square brackets, concentration of. And you may also notice that I have a negative in front. And that's because I know that A is going to be used up it's going to decrease in value, so if I take my final amount minus my initial amount, I'm going to get a negative number. I don't want that. So by putting that negative in front, I'm going to be taking the negative of a negative and get a positive rate overall. So if I take a look at that, um, I'd be looking at a concentration of A2 minus concentration of A1. In other words, final A amount minus initial A amount, and then T2 minus T1 final time minus initial time. So in terms of a reactant, that's how I could state that. Uh, also, I could express it in terms of a product. Product B. And in this case, again, the change in concentration of B over change in concentration of T, or sorry, just change in T. Notice I don't have the negative here. I don't need it, because I know the product B is being produced. It's adding an amount. I'm not going to get a negative value. I won't have to worry about that. So it's simply uh, concentration of B2 minus concentration of B1 over T2 minus T1. Okay? So the key thing there is how are you measuring A? Great. If you're measuring it in terms of a reactant being used up, you have to use that negative, in so negative sign in front of the quantity. If not, if it's, you're measuring in terms of product being produced, you don't have to worry about it. So going through an example here that's in your textbook, it uh, determined the rate at which butyl chloride, C4H9Cl, kind of complicated, doesn't matter, don't worry about it, is reacted with water given the following data. So let's assume we have that happening. So at the initial time, zero seconds, we have 0 0.220 molar of C4H9Cl. And after four seconds have passed by, my concentration, as you can see, has gone down. 0 0.100 molar. So obviously it's a reactant being used up. So now th that I know that, I know the appropriate way to express the rate. So rate is equal to the negative change in concentration of C4H9Cl over delta T. Because I know it's a reactant being used up, I'll use that negative. To ensure that that negative does what it's supposed to, I just simply place it outside of brackets here. Um, and looking at just simply labeling my final amount of C4H9Cl minus uh, the initial amount of C4H9Cl, which I symbolize as 2 and 1, just like T2 minus T1. 
and just simply putting those values in there. So I have my final amount of C4H9Cl is 0 0.100 molar. I initially started off with 0.2, so put them in the right areas there. And then 4 seconds minus 0 seconds. So doing that operation, 0.1 minus 0.22, I get 0 0.120 molar. And of course, 4 minus 0 is 4. And I end up with a final answer, 0 0.120 molar. See, so you can see what the negative does here. It's taking that negative amount. The negative of a negative equals positive. It's the only time in life when two wrongs make a right. I get decimal 0300 molar per second to the correct number of sig figs, that being three. So that is how we could measure rate. A nice little example there. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to squeeze in here is a demo derby, because it kind of relates to the next part being collision theory. A demo derby, if you've ever been to a demo derby, successful collisions result. And this is a great picture because it really shows this. Obviously, the first thing is cars must collide. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like the fight club thing. Rule number one, no one talks about fight club. Rule number one of collision theory, things must collide. Um, and they also have to collide in an effective manner. If you notice here what this car is doing, it's going in reverse and hitting this car, which is good because you don't want to destroy your motor. So most of the time in a demo derby, it's the rear end of a car that's hitting another car. And ideally, if this car could hit this one's motor and take it out, even better. And also, you got to hit it hard enough. So collide, collide in the right way, and collide with enough energy. Now, how does that relate to chemistry? Let's take a look. Collision theory, same thing. In order for a reaction to be successful, the reactants must obviously collide. That's the first thing. They also must collide with the correct orientation in the right way, just like the demo derby cars. They have to hit in the right way to be successful. And also, reactants must collide with sufficient energy. So very similar. If you can remember the demo derby example, it's very similar. And that marks the end of uh, the part one vodcast for our model for reaction rates. Part two will follow.